Hey YouTube family, we are gonna go ahead and get off into it, honey. I mean, here's to the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get started about what happened, why I ended up leaving my job um, a lot earlier than what I planned to. So we're not gonna take up too much time. We're gonna go ahead and get right on into it, y'all. I'm not gonna make this video super, super long. So it actually happened this past uh, Monday. So I go into work, get ready to have a regular day. At this point, I'm already, I'm just really taking it day by day. I'm already frustrated with my supervisor, my supervisor because he's annoying as hell. And so I was one of the social worker therapists at our facility where I did therapy with our Jerry psych patients. Something that I enjoyed doing, but it was just my supervisor was annoying to me. It's not that he was mean, like he was not. He was actually tolerable. It's just, I don't like when people don't stay in their lane. Everybody has their own way of doing things and going about doing things. It doesn't make my way right and your way wrong or your way right and my way wrong. It's just about adjusting to everybody has their own styles, okay? So I don't care if I gotta take the yellow brick road and you gotta take the highway to hell to get there as long as we get there, right? So, I was in the middle of doing my therapy session and he interrupted me. That was a big no-no. <laughs> and the reason why I, it frustrated me because it had been a lot of stuff going on leading up to this point. So how I would kind of do things is when we had high functioning patients, of course, I can talk to them. They can talk back to me. You know, we're engaging with each other. But when we had low functioning patients and all of that stuff, we, I tried to find a way to kind of meet them halfway. And it's difficult if you have low functioning patients and you care about your patients. Like, you want to make sure that they can engage and get the most out of their therapy sessions as well. So, I found that something that they like to do was like crafts, um, activities, they love to color, things of that nature. And I would literally bring my speaker to work every day. And during our therapy session, I would play, you know, some form of soft music, something that would relax them, something that would bring a smile to their face. Because I'm truly not in it for the money. Like I, I actually enjoyed working with my patients and what we did. So in the middle of my therapy session, this child of God, for lack of a better word, um, interrupts me and is like, um, Miss Eroni, this isn't psychotherapy. And I was like, okay. So what do you suggest that I do? When we have patients that are low functioning and that bless their heart, bless their heart, they don't even know that they exist right now. What do you suggest that we do? I said, look, I've tried it your way. I have no problem following direction. Um, you know, it's just, it's not engaging to them. They don't, they don't feel relaxed. They don't feel like, you know, like they're getting anything out of it. So what I suggested was let's meet them halfway. Let's do something that they enjoy when we have patients that can't really engage back because they don't understand how to engage back. And let's just make them enjoy this experience versus standing up in the middle of group talking at them and they're not receiving anything. I said, so child of God, since you know it all, what do you suggest that we do for 35 to 40 minutes during group therapy session? We're standing up there talking to ourselves. We're getting zero engagement. Um, what do you suggest that we do? And let me tell you what child of God said. Child of God said, um, yeah, that's psychotherapy is talking to yourself for 35 to 40 minutes. At this point, y'all, I lost it at the nurse's station. I told him, I said, get out of my face. Get the fuck out of my face. I said, don't sit here. Instead of you wanting to be a leader, that's fine. Be a leader. But don't sit here and tell me that talking to myself for 35 to 40 minutes is psychotherapy for the community that we are here to serve. Don't tell me no stupid shit like that. Please don't. You know, instead of him being a leader and being like, okay, you know, let, you know, after this, after this group 
therapy session is over. Let me show you what I do. Let me show you what works for me and see if it works for you. That's what a leader would do. Not sit up here and try to be fucking sarcastic. So at this point, I'm like, you know what? I had put in my month's notice a couple of weeks ago. I have talked to HR three times about Child of God. Um, I have talked to him myself just on some real respectful professional like, look, I got this. Just trust me. I'm doing phenomenal at the job. Just let me do my thing. Like, I respect you as a supervisor, but I am my own therapist. Let me do my therapy sessions my way. Because who the fuck said your boring ass way is the right way? You know what I'm saying? So, I was done. I went to my office, I grabbed my purse, and I went to HR because I didn't want to just be unprofessional and heated in that moment and just be like, you know what, well, fuck y'all, I'm out. So I didn't do that. So I went to HR, which I felt like I was trying to do the right thing, the professional thing, and I was like, look, don't pay me for today, I don't care. Like, you know, I'm getting a very good salary. I'm frustrated at this point. I'm very angry. I'm crying because this is something that had been going on continually since I first started this job. I said, let me go home for the day. Let me just think. Don't pay me. I don't care. That's that's not the issue here. Let me decide what it is that I need to do for me and to be an effective therapist moving forward because I can't work like this. I've talked to y'all three times. I tried to talk to him several times, just me on him, on some very, very respectful shit. And nothing's being done. I don't feel like I'm being supported, you know, here. And I love her to pieces. Very beautiful woman. She has been amazing since I first started there. So if she sees this video, nothing but love, girl. But I'm going to call a spade a spade. Um, she suggested a sit down with him i refuse to sit down and the reason why i refuse to sit down is because like i previously stated i had already spoken with hr regarding this issue three fucking times three and i had also had my own meeting with just me and him a few times i said i'm not talking to this man again i'm we we not doing that that's not an option we not doing that we just, we not doing it. That's off the table. Because if he walks in this office and I'm in here right now, I'm going to jail. I'm telling y'all right now, like, I'm just, I'm not doing it. I'm going to lose complete control. I just lost body at this point. <laughs> like, I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm over it. I have tried to do the professional thing. And this is it. Uh, y'all ain't meet me halfway. Y'all ain't even trying to meet me halfway. You know, let me just. I'm going home for the day, okay? We can follow up tomorrow. I, I can't I can't do this. Her exact words to me was, if I go home for the day to cool off, that would be considered abandonment. And if I'm going to abandon my position as a therapist, then I'm going to need to hand over my badge. I happily unclip that shit from the cute ass dress I was wearing that day. Here you go, boo. I'll see you when I see you. Bye. <laughs> and as strong as I was in that moment, and it was almost like an outer body experience. I planned on being with this company for a long period of time. We had amazing benefits. I was getting paid the most I've ever gotten paid in my social work career as afraid as I was it was almost like I of course I knew it was me that was talking I knew it was me that was unclipping my badge and handing it to this lady and as much as I knew that I needed my job to fund my dream my business um and support my children as y'all know I am a single mom um it was almost like I knew it was me and I was proud and I was like, yes, bitch, you better do that shit, girl. <laughs> I was scared. I was, I was afraid also. I unclipped that badge and I handed it to her and I had my, held, my, my head held high. 
And when I got home, um, I'm sorry, when I got in my car, the first thing I always do in any situation, me and my mom are like literally BFFs. I'm her only child. I'm a girl. We're super close. Um, she is an amazing, amazing support um, to myself and to my children. And um, on my way home, y'all, and as you can hear, I'm getting a little teary-eyed. I began to cry. <laughs> I, as proud of myself as I was in that moment and as brave as I was, I started to cry because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't. And of course, I come from an amazing family. Um, and I decided in that moment that I was gonna pray and I was afraid. I still am. It's only literally today is Thursday. I, this happened on literally this past Monday. And um, God has blessed me so much with amazing friends and an amazing support system. So as I begin to utilize my support system and everybody was there for me that I called and literally everybody that was like, look, you got this. You got this. And um, I had to reflect back to earlier that day because, um, and the reason why earlier that day was so important to me is because I have been incorporating instead of listening to music or talking on the phone on my way to work, unless it's, of course it's with my mom or my best friend that I would take that time on my way to work and on my way home from work when I'm alone to talk to God because I have been on this journey of, uh, you know, just getting back close with God and just all these, all these different journeys and trying to figure me out um, on my journey to being a better woman, a better wife to a husband one day, a better mother, a better businesswoman, a better social worker just all aspects of me that I pray instead of listening to music and I never forget on Monday one of the specific things was I said God I started my business in 2018 and I have been doing absolutely amazing um, the connections that he's allowed me to make I've been featured in at least about four or five Voyage, Canvas Rebel articles. Um, and I remember when I got my first magazine um, article featured in Shout Out Houston, Texas. And I started to cry because I just hit a little bit different. Because I'm from... Sorry, my mom's calling me. <laughs> So I'm gonna call her back in a few, but just all of these blessings. And you know, this was me. This was all me being moved by God to um, share my calling with the world, share me being a businesswoman. I have the oddest name ever. My literally, my first name is Erini, and my last name is Minix hyphen Scipio. Um, I'll get into that another day. <laughs> but I always say I was meant to do something bigger because there's no way that I have a weird ass name like how I have and the world ain't gonna know it. You know, that's my thing. The world will know my name. And I wanna share love with you all. Um, realness, truth, confidence, successes, losses. Because in the midst of me trying to figure me out, um, <laughs> this is my vulnerability. This is me, you know, this new journey that I'm embarking on being a businesswoman. Because when I walked out of that door on Monday, I said, you know what? I'm never going to answer to anybody else. I'm never going to get paid again every two weeks. I'm never going to none of that shit. Like God has something so much greater for me. And 
today is the first day of the rest of my life and I got this you got this whatever it is that you're going through you got this I have seen the ugliest of the ugly <laughs> I've seen it I felt it I've experienced racism on the job female discrimination I'm a single mom I haven't talked to my kids dad in over almost 10 years <laughs> like I listen and I'm still here and you're still here and we're still here we have a greater purpose y'all and I know this might sound all over the place but I want you to look yourself in the mirror every day just like I do I've been doing it for a long time tell yourself you won't make it because you ain't got no other fucking choice and that's how I'm looking at life right now like you won't make it I'm gonna make it you gonna make it we gonna make it um and that's just what it is I know I got off on a whole nother tangent but that's that's what happened on Monday <laughs> that was my Monday today is Thursday that was three days ago I just wanted to share with you all how I walked away from my therapist position why I walked away from it and why I have a whole new strength today why I've always believed in myself but it was something about the way that I felt when I got in that car and I felt defeated initially and I and I cried and it's okay to cry but it's it, I have a whole new hunger I have a whole new purpose um I have a whole new message to share so if you don't take anything else from this video I want you to know that I'm gonna tell you just like I, I told every group that I've worked with um, as a therapist you have value in this life. You have purpose in this life. You are important in this life. We have a strength that God gives us that we don't even realize we have until we need to dig it out and use it. Um, you got this. You're stronger than what you give yourself credit for. And even though shit it's scary sometimes the the fear unknown is scary the unknown is fearful but i want us to put our trust in god right now and just know that when we feel like we ain't got shit else we have him we all have a purpose and he put us here to use it so thank you so much for listening to my story um I'm trying to grow my presence on TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. So y'all follow me on there. And thank you so much. So very much. Each and every one of you. I don't care if you're black, white, polka dot, striped, short, tall, slim, thick. It doesn't matter. We're all beautiful and we all have a purpose. I want you to stand in your purpose fearfully. No, wait unfearfully <laughs> i'm sorry y'all i'm dingy as hell <laughs> unfearfully and just let's support each other let's love ourselves first and foremost and i just want you to know that we got it you got it and i don't edit my videos that much and sometimes i'm clumsy and i'm all over the place but that's just me you know and i just want you to be you because you're beautiful and i love you and i hope to connect and grow with you all so much more thank you so much for allowing me to cry and be vulnerable and all of that weird shit that's not really weird at the end of the thank you so much i love you um since i've been trying to get back consistent on youtube i have gained i think 18 plus subscribers and i i appreciate each and every single one of you and i truly do and we're going to continue to grow our family. We're going to be positive. I want it to be positive vibes over here. I want to share every aspect of my life with you on my journey to being a businesswoman, a full-time businesswoman, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to cry with y'all. We're going to laugh together. We're going to talk about random shit together. We're going to 
We family, y'all. When I start connecting with people, we become family. And I am vulnerable. And I let my guards down in each and every way with you all. So thank you so much for being on this part of my journey. This is definitely a life-changing experience. It woke up an undeniable hunger in me. And I'm not going to stop until I make it, y'all. So thank you. Bye.